As many of you know, I was at the 2013 Mini Maker Fair in Ottawa. I was very busy with my own booth, showing off my homemade music player, so I didn't have much time to see other things. But here's what I could get in during the quieter times. First, a robot arm from Carleton University. It's in the back, both tendons in the front, so it's uh, the green tendon in the front runs up through the uh, front of the finger. The okay. red tendon in the back holds down to the back, so we have one that's pulling, one that's pushing. Uh, ah, okay, yeah. I was reading about that recently in the special effects world, they do that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. instead of geared inside the hand, it's more of a, uh, a pulley system. Right. Um, but instead of having a pulley system at each one of the joints, uh, it's fully up to the front of the finger. Okay. And those are the five servos there for your four fingers and one thumb? Four fingers, one thumb, and uh, three servos in the back. One for the uh, shoulder, two for the shoulder, one for the elbow. Okay. Much higher torque noise. Also got a oh, one for the, the wrist. Oh, so the wrist can turn to yeah. rotate. Uh, exactly. Okay. And uh, what are you powering it? What are you uh, controlling it with? Them? Right Arduino? now we're, uh, we're just using an Arduino. Uh, we don't know if that's going to work long term for powering all the servo stuff. Okay. So we've, we've got a deep cycle marine battery oh, really? that we're going to hook them up to in sequence. Yeah, it's going to be uh, quite a lot of power. <laughs> yeah, it will be. And possibly using an SC32 board for uh, the greater amount of servo so we can show up for up to like, uh, 32, uh, 32 servos. In theory, yeah. In theory, yeah. Okay, yeah, you're a heck of a lot with that. Ralph Nevins modifies his cameras so that they capture only a single line of what's in front of them and get some very neat effects. This is called slit scan photography. Here's one of his cameras showing the sensor inside. So clearly it sees only a line instead of a whole two-dimensional image. To help explain it, this is what a normal camera would see. But with his modified slit scan camera, the camera sees only this slice. As this person's head moves towards the camera and to the left, only a vertical slice is ever seen. The camera takes this set of photos, and when they're stitched together, the result looks like this. The head is smaller on one side because when this vertical slice was taken, the head was farther away. And when this slice was taken, the head was closer. And that's how you produce this one. This that one, the camera is staying still? Staying absolutely still, so the only motion it can capture is the people walking towards the camera. So the background stays static, it just right. turns into lines, and it's just the people walking by. Oh. and including their motion motion in the picture. Okay. This is put into a gutted film camera. Right. So, and so that the actual, I don't know if you can see that, the uh, sensor is actually at the film plane of the camera. Okay. And then a, a little bit more electronics besides that is the Ardenio Dew inside of the box. And at our rotating okay. camera here that's taking us right now. <laughs> yeah. An SD card and yeah, the LCD, which is mainly the, S used the LCD mainly for the histogram to try to figure out exposure uh, and give some kind of idea of what's happening. All right. But there's not much else in there. Just a lot of a lot of code. She's lying down on a table, rotating. And you can see the notches of the table this round table that she's rotating on. Okay, and the camera's above? The camera's directly above, and so her arm is going to be at the center point and how it dives across. And then, like, uh, like I mentioned before, I just take a section of the picture, and this is the same woman. Actually, this is going to be three of them, so say there's the top, and there's three. Okay. So it's cut off about that much. That's the actual, what you actually took. Yep, and wrap it. This is a slightly different picture. If you look at that hand, is in a slightly different location. Okay, so that, this was after the computer like After I did, did, did some, a little bit of Photoshop. Okay. And these images are the same, exactly the same, done the same way, except for you can tell that these are only two rotations. Okay. And this one right here, this is... So this is the camera feet. rotating. Okay, moving along. Yeah, right. moving, so you get background. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's either uh -huh. either it's slightly ahead of the person or slightly behind the person, or this person sped up. Okay. Where this person is moving very quickly, so they're very thin. Right. And this person's walking along, and you're... Kind of chopping off their feet as they're walking. Okay, because you're only catching it's certain... really bizarre. I don't know why the feet turn backwards. <laughs> I haven't tried to figure out that motion yet. Yeah. 
And if you're in the Ottawa area, he has this exhibit coming up. You guys have often seen me use electronic parts taken from microwave ovens, power supplies, and so on. Here's another use for them. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so where do you get these? Uh, well, these are what, first of all? So these ones are yes, uh, pieces from old computers that are going to be thrown out. Okay. And um, I took apart the computer and then used the components that were in the computer to make jewelry out of them. Okay. That does look like uh, memory chips maybe? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not super knowledgeable on the different <laughs> components, but I think they're memory chips. Yeah. Okay. And you, you soldered some resistors to look like socket or something? Or? Oh, this is actually, I didn't solder them, I just twisted the wire okay. around yeah. the different um, pegs. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. The different, uh, oh no, now I'm drawing, drawing a blank in the correct name. <laughs> uh -oh. Legs, maybe? <laughs> I like how you did the background here as the back of a board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. It's fun. What are these ones down here? So just, this is a pin that I made. It was just a piece of so the back, you can see the oh, pin. It was just another component of the computer. Transformers, capacitors. And I thought it looked really cool, it's just all the different wires. Although someone did tell me not to wear it in an airport, because people might think you have like a bomb on your shirt. Right. Or, like, or something that might interfere with the airplane yeah. hardware. It's a good point, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and these other ones are bicycle tire tubes. Uh, yeah, they're all made from all these inner tubes of bikes. Beautiful. Yeah, so you just cut them and it has, it's, they're really soft and light. So yeah. often you'll not even know that you're wearing earrings. So right. About it. <laughs> in this one, seven frequency ranges have been selected from the violin. Each range is paired up with an endangered bird. And when the frequency is played, the bird appears on the screen to sing along and also tweet. The sound was too bad to use for the first part of this, but here's the part that followed where the sound was good. This is an hourly comic. Uh, basically, there's every February when you have, you do a comic for every hour you're awake, and you're doing a comic about what you're doing at that time. And so in this one, I was up from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., so you have 17 different comics. Okay. So, uh, 6 a.m., I was woken up by the cat. 7 a.m. I was eating and doing stuff. I made a little dry comment. Okay, exercise. I had the day off, so I was my ter the terrible exercise machine, but it's a good idea of what I was actually doing at the time. And 9 a.m. I was driving down the airport parkway. Right. Let's recognize it. 10 a.m. I was watching the cat look at squirrels on a fence. 11 a.m. I was trying to feel all those little Lego minifig special packages, and etc. Cool. etc. Et so right. it goes on throughout the day. That, what was I doing at that exact time? And towards the end, you start getting comics where I'm doing it's comics about right. making comics about all the things I was doing. <laughs> it gets, something I can't draw. Like it gets uh, recursive. At, at noon, I was eating lunch with a bunch of people, so it's like I can't really pull in the sketchbook and say, "Oh, hey, I'm eating lunch with a bunch of people." It's like that's just no. Okay. This one was mentioned to me by a few different people at the fair. These are not only flawlessly hand-painted, but much that's added is handmade. I've used wire mesh and epoxy in the past, but never on the scale of a few millimeters. My name's Norbert Black, and my hobby is to customize Lego minifigures. So I take a stock figure like this, a collection of parts and their factory uh, colors, sometimes with, uh, with printing from the factory, and what I will do is I will take away Lego's printing and with use of a fine tip brush, acrylic paint, actually work step at a time, and here's a piece in, uh, in progress, till in the end you wind up with something like this. Right?
Yes. So these are all the same group here, all these Very others. much so. And here at Maker Faire, we made an attempt, and I think we succeeded, in not bringing anything that came out of a Lego kit. So Seriously, no these were all made? No instructions. Oh, not Somebody from the looked, at, looked at the inside of their eyeballs and said, this is my vision, I will build it. And what a perfect statement that is to end this video on. Thanks, Norbert. And thanks to everyone for letting me share your wonderful work. More links are below. Thanks to the Canada Science and Technology Museum for the great venue. And a special thanks to the organizers and volunteers for the amazing job they did. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos on making things. That includes the one about my 555 timer chip music player I showed at the fair. Another on how to make a Wimsers machine using CDs for the discs. And one on how to make a speaker using piezoelectric crystals. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, leave a question, or comment below. See you in a bit.